going, Phil? I gather uh, you're a bit exercised about what's happening in Glasgow. Yeah, there's the, it appears to be the Labour links, the Labour establishment in Glasgow. Um, They're still corrupt, then? Or, well, you could say allegedly, but allegedly. I mean, or, or is, it, is, is it allegedly or is it just, well, no, no, we're not corrupt. We've just always done this. Um, it's you of, mentioned Tammany Hall, a well-known... Tammany Hall, vote fixing, I don't know about vote fixing, but there's definitely other kind of dodgy things. They're finding the links with Glasgow criminal families um, and the, the council funding of youth centres, which are basically gang huts for ga for criminal gangs. And was this on an SMP website or something? Uh, it was on uh, Joe McAlpine's column in the record, which is normally a Labour paper, on Tuesday. Only nominally. <laughs> yeah. Labour paper. Well, yeah, maybe. It's, it's, it's recipient. I can't even say the word. They're very keen on Labour. <laughs> Well, they always have been. It's another part of the Scottish Labour establishment. I don't have my glasses on. Um, so what about Bridget McConnell's role, the, the well, First Minister's wife? They were talking about removing the funding at some point from this, and she intervened. Well, she was the head of that department, uh, Leisure, Culture, whatever they, they called it over in Glasgow, and uh, to make sure that the funding, it was a million plus a year. Um, then there was also, you have Mr. Purcell. Now, these gangs are all dealing in all sorts of dodge things, and I've no doubt they were also involved in drugs. And Mr. Purcell... Allegedly. Who, allegedly, yes. You know, like, kind of step... Because the poor man had, um, you know, a habit, you know, like um, some of the, all these other labour habits, depending on what they are, you know, um, and all the links. But when you look at labour, and it's not just in Glasgow, north of England as well, if you go back, T. Dan Smith, remember all that with the builders, and then you start having a look at Glasgow as well, I mean, who's responsible for some of the worst social housing in Europe, not just in the UK, but in Europe, where they were, the designs they used were for North Africa, Hutchison B. Um, was this the, was it the Labour Party that built all these kinds of houses? Well, Glasgow, they've been more or less in charge of Glasgow for about 70 years, mm. um, and if you go to Easter houses, um, where they just basically build giant gulags, really is what they were, uh, with no public transport hardly. Um, that's why private hire cars is the only way they get into the town, no shops, uh, just horrific. And then they pat themselves on the back. Um, people used to live in tenements with, uh, well, not the tenements down, all these really, really nice tenements in well, they Glasgow. Just, they, needed, they needed gutted and renovated, yeah, yeah, no lot, doubt about that. A lot of them didn't have toilets. There's a toilet on the stair, common, a shared toilet. Imagine in the middle of the night, having to go down a, halfway down the stairs in a tenement to a shared toilet. The last one in Edinburgh went around 1990 in uh, Hallmeyer Street, uh, the last tenement there. Well, that's fine. Uh, I mean, I stay in a tenement over 100 years in Leith. Now, my toilet in my flat actually used to be the stair kludgy. Uh, it wasn't when I found when I ripped everything out that you thought, oh, you looked at the stemper. The hall was actually part of my hall, was actually part of the stair. Well, what do you do? You go in, these are solid stone tenements, you just rip out this, what isn't working um, and replace it. But no, they knock the whole thing down and build things that have inbuilt damp and condensation uh, uh, and no proper heating systems. Whereas before you used to have proper, you know, you would have a fire in the middle and which would keep a whole lot. You have box bed for the servant. For the servant, I know, for Granny when he stayed, all the two or three a, kids that all stayed you, in the you, corner. You needed a posh tenement to have a box bed. Yep. I mean, I'm actually really surprised that the SNP haven't cottoned on to, what, a dog's breakfast, particularly in the West, West Coast, that a, a lot of Labour did, because they were the establishment. It, it sort of went, went down hereditary, um, which, and they still have the same attitude to now, um, where I find where they want to set, quite, I've heard, you were talking about it earlier, they wish to set a question. I mean, because everybody knows they're the government, they just didn't win the election. I mean, it gets... Oh, yeah, yeah, but let me just um, focus in on this issue. Yes, it was announced by the Electoral Commission that uh, Labour, or the Yes campaign's plans to set up a committee and suggest an alternative referendum question than the one proposed by the SNP, uh, they've already ruled that it is not for 
a yes campaign to come up with a question. It's up to, up to the Scottish Government, which is a bit of a slap in the face with a wet kipper for the yes campaign, and in particular for the Labour Party. But the Labour Party are taking it well. Uh, I think that was a joke the last bit, the Labour Party are taking it well. Or the No Lab campaign, because I think they, 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 they've been kind of smart, I think they're smart with it's um, the Yes campaign, but they put NP on the NDS, so Yes NP. The Yes uh, NP. Making out that, oh, well, the Yes NP's running it, you know, I mean, they, they're not very good at adding up, considering the, the vast majority, the, well, the overwhelming majority of the government is SNP, um, and then you have a daughter and a green to run off screaming and shouting they don't want to play. Um, are you talking the, about Patrick Harvey? Yeah, you have the yes, yes. Oh, we're not playing, we're not playing. And what about um, Margaret McDonald? Didn't she have a valid thing to say last week in the Sunday paper? Yeah, whatever is a valid, but again, I love Margaret a bit, but you're in a minority. You know, they are the government, so, and they did win 45% of, the you know, so overwhelmingly, nobody thought they could do it. So really, they do have a right to set down the rules. That because I mean, they're there because the Scottish people put them in. It, it's, it's, you know, sitting there going, oh, we lost, we lost. That's not fair. We still want to run it, um, and just, just get on with it. I mean, I just hope the whole thing turns out to be a bit more positive over the next couple of years. But I doubt it. Then Labour's frontman, Alistair, can I flip another house, darling? You know, when he was uh, in the government. Um, and why isn't Joanne Lamont leading it? She's a Scottish leader after all. Well, what about uh, Alistair Darling and LIBOR? The LIBOR scandal? Uh, they haven't quite cut them, they haven't cut them with a smoking gun yet, but it's, it's not far away. Oh it? no, you, Osborne is probably going to have to, he won't do it groveling, or he'll probably send that, that wee woman that he sent to get eaten by Chloe, Paxman. Chloe, Chloe Smith. Smith is eaten by Paxman to go and give an apology to Ed Balls when um, after saying, oh yes, they were in, they were involved in all this in this rigging um, and a deputy of uh, Bank of England and all that says, no, they weren't, had nothing to do with them. Um, so, but that's all, that's desperate. I mean, they're all desperate. I mean, you're surrounded with desperation, desperate incompetence in Westminster, desperation because they're not in charge from Scottish Labour. Um, no wonder Alec looks smug most of the time when he's surrounded with just this acres of desperate, desperate, we want to be in charge. Next two years are going to be interesting.